Today I'm going to show you how to make a wheel lacing stand out of some scrap wood, scrap bike parts, and a whole bunch of scrap junk that I got from making YouTube videos. <laughs> Keep watching and I'll reverse engineer it for you. So here we go, we have my stand here and the stand itself is a microphone stand that I got for free. As you can see, I can raise it, lower it. The other parts there are from another stand and uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. But what I can do is I can move the rim around and the hub just spins around. So as you can see here, I'm using a through axle and what I got there is a few spacers and a quick release axle. The reason I'm using that is because I had some trouble with a through axle adapter and I'll show you that in a little bit. So here you can see the spokes, they just fit right over the, uh, the little arms there. And in case you were thinking that the blocks of wood would get in the way of the spoke rotation, um, you'd be wrong. <laughs> Essentially, the wood is low enough that the spokes will just rest on it, so you can just lace the wheel without any problem. Uh, what I've done is I used those spacers to just prop up the hub, and that pretty much alleviated that problem. There you go. You can see those spacers there. You can add or remove as needed, depending on the size of the hub. It'll all depend. Like, if you're using boost hubs or something like that, it, you're going to have to remove spacers, or maybe add spacers. So here's uh, the underside view and there's a spacers there it's connected by a mic adapter and the wood here just wood screws you know like deck screws and those you can just get for free pretty much from any uh, landscaping site I suppose or uh, construction crew and as you can see here just uh, the whole stand can spin around although the legs are a little short it's totally fine it holds the weight it's just gonna be the hub the spokes and the rim so there you go and uh, you can see how the rim can just move around there and what I've done on these uh, metal arms here, they're like aluminum, is I just kind of put these little uh, stoppers so that you can move the rim around, but you can't move it so that it falls off the arms. I don't know, I, I don't think it really need a whole lot more than that. I'm just kind of giving you an idea, almost like it's a prototype, you know? Like I could make this better, but you know, I'm doing it for free, I'm doing it for nothing. So that's pretty much the, the entire goal of my channel. <laughs> All this stand really does is it just takes the, uh, I guess the jankiness out of laying your, your rim on a table. And you know, the problems that would occur with that. So there you go, you can see you can, you have lots of room that you can just put your spokes in to each hole. The wood doesn't get in the way at all. And there, you can see it just slid right out and I'll just slide it right back in. And there we go. And then we'll just lean on top of the higher pieces of wood. And as needed, you just spin the hub and insert your spokes. There you go. Uh, yeah, I guess there would be a small impediment there, but all you have to do is just raise the hub up and it'll slide right through. And there you go, your spoke is perfectly movable and all is well. <laughs> you can see at the top here, the on the uh, the top flange, you wouldn't really need to uh, actually spin the, the wheel around at all. And there you can see my arms are all movable because they're just on screws and they move around as needed any way that you want them to go. And here we go, I'll just show you. There's kind of like these little felt pads on there so it doesn't damage the rim and it slides. The, those pads are like furniture sliding pads. <laughs> so. I don't see why it wouldn't work with uh, a rim with no weight. So there we go. We'll just find the valve hole. And there you can see, like, if it got, if the spoke gets stuck a little bit, you just move the rim around. And here we'll just uh, kind of mock insert our key spoke. There we go. We have both key spokes on either side. And if you don't know what I mean by a second key spoke, uh, I have other videos that explain how to do the Shimano disc lacing and my version of it. So here we go. You can see, just count the holes over. Normally you would put on your nipples, but I'm not really gonna build it. I'm just showing you how it works and how to uh, navigate any possible impediments that you might see, which there really are none. And if you know how to lace up a wheel, which is why you would want a jig like this in the first place, then you would understand that really it doesn't have to be perfect like the other types of stands that you might see online because I looked them up and most of them are just really difficult to replicate especially for free. So now here's the hub I'm just gonna pull it off and as you can see there's a quick release axle so you just take it off and it's for a rear hub but still it doesn't really matter it, it's a little bit more narrow than the through axle the 12 mil through axle itself and here are my spacers I got a long one, a short one. And what I've done is I put a, a wood screw through 
the wood and you really want to be careful here because you know it, it's a sharp edge and it has threads so you could cut yourself so as you can see the the spacers will just slide on the axle will just slide over that and of course the hub will just slide right over that with the axle being not so snug but snug enough to hold the hub in place and then you can spin it around you can find where your key spoke holes would be and there you have it now uh, this is important here uh, the the other stands that you might see online the rim spins around and what i've done here is i've just used a mic stand which spins around in itself and that's pretty much the next best thing like I guess this stand here would be in between, you know, your dining room table and, you know, all these like expensive uh, stands like, like that Wheel Fanatic or the Noble Wheel Lacing Stand. And this here, like you can see, you can just move it up, move it down, depending like if you're sitting or you want to stand and do it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of those other stands, you have to be sitting. And that's not necessarily the way that I like lacing, to be honest. So I'll just start taking it apart here. Just remove the hub. And again, you can see that quick, that quick release axle. And you can see that wood screw and the spacers now here's the i'm just going to show you before i i continue i'm going to show you the problem i had with uh, this through axle adapter now it works well on this particular hub uh, this uh, bonte hub here you can slide it in one way you can slide it in the other way in case just in case you need to flip the wheel around or or whatever um i don't know uh, however you would want to do it Th these through axle adapters here they can work on some hubs but they might not work on others. You can see here, if you, if you just move the spacers a little bit, like it might be a little too low and you might not be able to slide the spokes around uh, like I showed you with the Formula Hub because the flanges are down in between those, those uh, slats of wood there. You need it sort of in the center or maybe a little bit closer to the drive side of the hub so that you can sort of uh, account for the dish that's going to be there. So here I just put a little something on that uh, wood screw because I'm going to take it apart here and I don't want to do anything stupid and screw my hand. <laughs> so as you can see here it, it just kind of spins around because that adapter is in the wood. So what that adapter does is a 5 8 adapter to a quarter inch and what it does is it just screws right onto the mic stand like basically any microphone might do which I'll kind of show you later so it takes a little bit you spin it around and you start thinking about how to do it smart you know working hard working smart you can just spin the uh, the mic stand around and uh, just hold on to the wood piece and there you go there's that adapter that's a 5 8 uh, female and a quarter inch male which I had uh, put inside of the wood so just just to give you an idea of what of what I'm using here, I'm just going to show you the stand, that the mic stand. So really it's a microphone with a boom arm and what I've done is just remove the boom. So I'm putting the boom arm back on and as you can see we work smart and we just you know, spin the whole boom around because it's really inefficient. We just screw in the stand into the uh, the threads by spinning the stand. So here you go as you can see like here's the boom, you know you can just move it around. At first I tried putting the stand on the boom arm but as you can see, there's a little part there, and it just uh, sh ended up stripping the ended up stripping the bolt, and that, that's a whole other story. So I'm just gonna keep showing you here. I'll just tighten it up. You can see on the end of that boom arm, there's another 5/8 male thread. Just give it a quick sec here, get it in place, and I'll show you here the how the mic would go on. Like I said, I'm reverse engineering, so I've taken this off. Now I'm just gonna put it back on so you can see what I was working with like right from the beginning. And we have a uh, one of these blue snowball mic thing. <laughs> eh, it's not bad, I suppose, but there we go. That's on. This is what it looked like, basically. You know, use the boom arm, use the boom mic. And, then, and that way you can see where I kind of got my inspiration from it. Like I looked at it and I said, now how can I turn this into a wheel lacing jig? And eh, that's just the way that my brain works. Oh yeah, like I got this here for free from the free store over at the, the university by my house. And they allow me to use the store because I am an alumnus. So here we go. Here, here's the rest of the stand. I'll just 
kind of give you a, a quick overview because you don't have to have a, a mic stand to screw this onto. You could just do this on your table and I'm pretty sure it would work uh, just as well. I don't know. I, I really don't lace like this, but you know, you can see here that this particular Bonte hub, the flanges are a little too low, so that's not going to work. So this is how my spacers would work. You just kind of throw it on there and you can see now the flange is clear. The pieces of wood there that hold the, the struts that would hold up the rim. As I showed you before on the stand itself, on the mic stand, it, it actually works just fine. So you could raise it up even higher and again, it, it would work perfectly fine. Like you can see how the, the spokes just, they'll, they'll totally clear the uh, the top of the wood and the uh, the rim supports the uh, the struts there. And again, you can just flip it around, and of course, you can raise and lower it as needed. And that's how that would work. Now, let's move back here to this Formula Hub, and you can see that the adapter fits in the drive side just fine. So that's cool. Like that would work. And there you go. You can see that the flange clears any of the obstacles there by what I've made, the piece of wood and those uh, those struts. Now, the problem I had here is it didn't fit in the non-drive side. But or the disc side and that makes it kind of garbage if I wanted to, if I needed to flip it around so my solution here is to use this uh, rear quick release axle again uh, I'll show you it's, it's a little more close up so you can just kind of see there's enough of that wood screw protruding that it should hold it in place very easily and through axle although it doesn't fit perfectly snug it fits in there and it'll hold it in place so there you go you can see it's still sitting nice and straight and with enough spacers the flanges will clear the wood and the strut. So here we go. I'll just take it apart here for you. And there's my other spacers. If you have a few spacers that are different lengths, that might help. It, it all depends on the hub that you have and the length of it. So here, I'm just going to remove those uh, those slats there, those struts. Uh, struts? Are they even struts? I don't know. But they're the supports for the rim. I'm just going to call them struts. And uh, what I did here is uh, I used some old screws, like they're Robertson screws. They're like old style Canadian screws. And the fact that they're, they're still around somewhere, you know, means that they're good screws and uh, I'm just gonna use them because I'm not paying for new ones. So I'll just use my drill here, just drills out, which is the way that I drill them in. And now the beauty of this is you have holes, so if I wanted to remake this stand and reuse it, because I, I don't really use lacing jigs, like lacing stands, if I wanted to reuse it, I have the holes already made, kind of like my pilot holes or whatever, and there we go. So we've taken it apart, and as you can see, I got those four Robertson screws. Here we go. Now, now you can can see that there were these uh, little stoppers that I placed and really I just took whatever junk like screws that I had that that would fit into them and because they're really really narrow they're like maybe M1s or something <laughs> M2s and here you go I just kind of made up you know another one I used some uh, V-brake uh, pad spacers on there to just take up the slack so that the bolt doesn't just jiggle around and there you go you saw those furniture pads you know I just kind of stuck them on there they're pretty sticky actually so I kind of want to get it right the first time it's not going to scratch the rim so there's no real metal on metal action there. as you can see it just kind of slides across so it's effective and for free so here's the stand it's like a mic stand they're like old like lamp stands what it does i just taken it apart you can see there's bolts and nut and those are those like little stoppers that i used on the ends uh, you got four of them and it was just a matter of finding bolts that fit them there you go you can kind of see that stand and that's where i kind of got the inspiration for that those i also got for free <laughs> People just throw anything away these days. So here we go. You can see my little wood apparatus here. And you know, if you need to cut some wood, you'd use a regular saw or just kind of showing off my new uh, Sawzall that I also <laughs> got for free. Well, not really for free. I did some work on a guy's bike and he paid me with a, a Dewalt, brand new Dewalt Sawzall. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Now I'm just gonna show you here the uh, how I got the adapter in. Um, it's in there pretty tight, but I'm gonna use a little uh, intestinal fortitude here. and. And just remove it. So what I done is uh, I just sort of screwed it into one of the holes that were there. You can do it by you know like putting a couple like just kind of putting a screw in there and uh, just reaming it out a little bit or whatever. But this is junk wood. There are holes all over. It. So there you can see it just screws back in. So now that hole is just there. Like it's kind of threaded in a in a sense. <laughs> And that'll be good enough because, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just wood. But were to break, I just redo it. So there you can see the just the wood screws. I just kind of screw.
screwed in. Um, I could have made this better, but you know, it's free. It's just scrap wood. Now, that's pretty much it. I hope you like this video. I hope it helps you out if you decide you want to make one of these stands. I can tell you that you don't need it. And judging from the price of the professional stands, you definitely don't need it. If you're uh, lacing wheels at home, maybe if you're doing, uh, you know, production line uh, wheel lacing, then yes. But other than that, if you really wanted to make one, this is how you do it. And you don't have to only use what I say to use. You can just look at whatever junk you have laying around and do that. So again, thanks for watching. And if you want to see another DIY stand that I made, you can click right here.